could blow like eight battles straight, bro. I'm the shit regardless, and I'ma still get paid to burn you pussies. Mr. Marcus, live action. Yo, what up, man? It's your boy Chris Sunbox. If you checking in, man, uh, JC vs. Danger Zone dropped on uh, the the um, Empire Battle League. A lot of people was telling me this battle was a classic when they was in the building, but it was just okay on camera. I don't know if it's because the crowd was so dead. You know, people was telling me it was only like a hundred people in the building for this um for this Empire Battle League battle. So I don't really feel like the promotion was probably where it needed to be to really to really get the people out. Plus it was snowing and shit. I heard it was a lot of shit going on with this event. The weather was really bad, so people just probably really didn't come out. But um. Honestly, man, this battle can go either way. I personally got the battle 2-1 Danger Zone. I gave him the third round and the second round. Um, the first round, it's debatable, you know what I'm saying? But I actually gave JC the, the first round. I like this Forge Whitt Whitaker line. I like the Ratchet louder than the one Craig was fucking. That, that shit was pretty cold. I did like the starter Carter shit from Danger Zone in round one. The Jada Kiss Benny Siegel line. I didn't really, I wasn't really feeling that Mickey Fax angle that he did to kind of end it with the whole diet shit. Like, I don't really, I didn't really feel like that shit really applied to JC. So I gave JC round one, round two. Danger Zone was very consistent. You know what I'm saying? The condescending bars were nice. Everything he said in round two was pretty decent, except for that Andre Barnardi line he had at the end of round two was a reach to me. You know what I'm saying? But that's about the only negative I really got. I felt like he was pretty consistent. JC started off well with the Mr. Marcus line. He kind of rebuttaled the Mickey Fax shit. Um, he had something about uh, like coming in or busting in a room faster than uh, than Urkel when Laura called or some shit. That shit was kind of cold. I felt like his round kind of ended, ended a little bit down below uh danger zone shit also uh jc rounds was short too i don't really know what the time limit of this battle was but jc rounds were definitely short round three jc was rapping he really wasn't saying nothing hot to me you know what i'm saying sometimes jc gets in that mode where he just be rapping but you know i mean you could call it filler but for the most part you know he just rhyming words but i don't really feel like it's any hard hitting punches i felt like round three was probably his weakest round um, Danger Zone round three. It wasn't crazy, but he, the Edward Scissorhand line was also cold. He had a seven streeter line too, like the singer, like extended clips bucking, it won't stop. So it's more or less like the singer when he's seven streeter. I guess he was trying to say sevens treat her or whatever, like the seven, like the gun or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got what he was saying. Was it a little bit of a reach? Maybe so, but I, I, I gave him a little bit of props for the creativity. So yeah, I thought his third round was just a little bit better than JC's third round, so I got it 2-1. But honestly, man, like you could really go the other way with this too. You could go JC 2-1, you could go Danger Zone 3-0, you can go JC 3-0. Like it's kind of like what you like. Whatever it is you like in a battle, you probably gonna like it the entire battle, and that's pretty much who you're gonna rock with. So, but for me, Danger Zone 2-1. Um, as far as Empire Battle League, man, it's really too many leagues in battle rap. And this is another league right here. This dude that started his league is a little short Pakistanian dude. You know what I'm saying? Like He probably got he probably got a little bit of battle rap knowledge. He's probably fans of a couple people. He got some long money and decided to jump into battle rap. You know what I'm saying? He hired a bunch of URL type battlers or whatever. He hired a lot of URL staff. He hired Smack as a host. You know what I'm saying? And it's like all that shit is like a front. You know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't really know Smack like that. He just hires him as a front man. Smack comes, pretty much hosts it, throws it up on the URL page as far as promotion, gets a check. And at the end of the day, there's no real relationship here. Me personally, I think some of these matchups would have probably been better on URL, especially like K Shine and Cortez, which was another battle y'all will eventually see. But that energy started on the URL channel. You know, when you watch the K Shine and Calico battle, he threw some shots at Cortez. You watch the Summer Madness 2 trailer, him and Cortez are like going at it. Cortez drunk off that Puerto Rican rum and that vodka to that Puerto Rican chopper go gay, 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 pasta! It just seemed like the energy started there. I felt like the energy should have finished there. DNA and Calico wasn't a good battle. Would it have been better if it was on King to Die, URL, UW League, maybe a league that they respected more? Probably so, but it's clear uh, Calico just took a paycheck. 
came to Empire Battle League and battled DNA. The Charlie Clips battle, you won't see because he got sick. That didn't finish. And um, so, yeah, this league pretty much popped up. And it's like they take a lot of big battles away. And it's hard to really blame the battle rappers because they just want to they just want to get paid. You know what I'm saying? So if a league comes in, like if you're a millionaire and Smack is doing what he's doing and you're a millionaire and you start a league and you say, well, I'm going to throw $10,000 for this battle between K-Shine and Cortez. K-Shine and Cortez may not be worth $10,000. Maybe it's worth eight thousand dollars you know what i'm saying maybe that's what smack is offering but they're gonna take the extra thousand and battle on empire battle league and empire battle league ends up having that battle but then they do the battle it's not really represented the way it should be promoted the way it should be filmed the way it should be the crowd the energy everything is not the way it should be and then the battle comes out it's not a great battle although the battle rappers got paid more and that's pretty much what's happening with empire battle league dude got long money he throwing a lot of money at these battle rappers creating this league and it's really taking a lot of top tier matchups and putting them on another channel and i'm not hating on the way it's filmed because the film and the audio sounds pretty good but the crowd is poor couple battles not panning out the way you want it to be and at the end of the day it's just too many leagues in battle rap you know what i'm saying i'm gonna do a blog about that shit later on too but it's just too many leagues in battle rap and a lot of these dudes they don't have the history or the knowledge to really represent the culture the way it should be and um that's why they doing that's why they run around trying to hire a bunch of url people to try to make it look good and make it look official because they really can't make it happen on their own let me tell you where ebl went wrong at right here they obviously told Calico, told DNA, yo, I need y'all to shoot a blog for this particular battle. So Calico and them, they went and they shot their blog. If you watch Calico's blog, he's basically telling you in the blog he ain't interested in the battle. Hey, yo, Empire Battle League, Calico, January 5th against DNA. This shit is going to be real smooth. Hey. We ain't about to sit here and go back and forth about, oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm gonna... Everybody know I'm going to kill you. And if you show up with your tooth in, I'm going to thump it down your throat. I really don't have nothing to say about DNA. Nothing. I don't even have nothing to blog about DNA. I don't know what to say. Do I talk about clips? Do I talk about... I, I'm not going to talk about his mama. I don't, I don't play them games. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't play the mama games. I don't know what to say about you. So, I'm taking this little time that I got to the battle to just brainstorm and keep getting drunk and thinking of some shit. You come dressed bummy as fuck so I can just freestyle and just tear you up right there. I don't know, pause. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say about him, man. Matter of fact, turn this shit off. I don't know what to say. Empire Battle League, January 5th, man, Calico, New York City. Let's do it. Soon as EBL got that blog, they should have canceled the battle. Period. They should have either canceled the battle or told this nigga like, yo, we ain't going to pay you unless you serious, unless you turn up, unless you put a blog out that really gives some energy to the battle. This nigga Calico basically just threw a blog up basically saying he ain't give a fuck. So, I mean, that right there, like when you a, when you a league owner and you see that shit, you already got to know your event ain't going to be what it need to be. And that's what's fucking up Battle Rap. Danger Zone 2-1, man. Unbiased review.